how to use on error resume next. Yeah, you probably think I'm being ridiculous now, but let's see. Hi, I'm Philip from codecabinet.com and today we've got another video of the Better VBA series where I talk about uh, code quality, optimizing VBA code for readability, maintainability and stuff like that. And today is about on error resume next. And this is a bit of a dangerous statement. And if you uh, would ask me how do you use it properly, I would say not at all. But that's not really possible because there are situations where you where it's really difficult to not use it. Let's phrase it that way. Um, but on error resume next is dangerous because it basically tells the VBA runtime to execute any line of code and if there's an error, just ignore the error, execute the next line. So you will never um, notice if there's an error in your program and your users won't notice either. So, uh, and I, when, when arguing about this, then I asked people, yeah, if you uh, tell the execution engine on error resume next and you want code to execute, but you don't care if it really executes and if it executes successfully, if, if that is your kind of uh, expectation to, to the code, that why write the code at all if you don't really care if it's executed without error? And so that, that is the problem I see with uh, on error resume next. And the, the reason I do this video now is because in recent months I worked with a couple of projects that were not developed by me. I just took over maintenance or supported the team uh, working on that uh, project. And with several projects I encountered multiple bugs that were essentially caused by the incorrect use of on error resume next. And yeah, that, that, that sounds a bit like I'm uh, ranting about some other stupid developers who uh, make mistakes. But when I prepared for this video and looked for a demo, I became quite humble because I used um, I found a procedure, a function in VBA that I use for quite a long time and I wanted to use it as an example for this is the right way to do it. And when I prepared the demo here, I noticed a bug inside that procedure that was caused by incorrect use of on error resume next. And we'll look at that in a minute. So, um, yeah, let's start with uh, a simple example. This is basically, that, that's uh, just like abstract code. It's not really uh, going to execute, but that, that is the basic problem here. You add an on error resume next to a procedure and this is originally okay because you, you call the do stuff method that is um, potentially causing an error and then you check for success and return the state of success to the calling code though, so that, that it can deal with uh, the result and display a message to the user, do whatever is, is correct. And if you would adhere to single responsibility here and say, yeah, every procedure does one thing only and leave it this way, then this would be fine. However, and that is how basically I think all the bugs happened that I mentioned earlier in the other projects, um, the okay state was enhanced by people doing this. They added, they looked at the procedure and said, yeah, that, that's the try to do stuff procedure is the right place to also do other stuff. 
And then they added uh, another method call or, or other statements in here and did not really realize or ignored the fact that the on error resume next that is uh, defined on procedure level um, will also apply to their new method here and the the check for success stuff is also not really um, taking this into account and then there's code here that may or may not execute successfully and we will never know if it was successful or not and that is how um, by uh, not really incorrect but by by slightly um risky use of on error resume next there were bugs introduced into a program so let's look at the right way to do it or one right way to do it this is also sample code i use in several projects and it's uh, about creating an um, outlook application instance and we we check is that was that created previously then we don't do anything here and then the on error resume next kicks in and we try to get an existing instance of outlook because that is uh, very beneficial in in terms of performance if we can reuse an existing instance and it's just one line and then we apply the on error go to zero and that basically resets uh, error handling to um no error handling at all you could also say on error go to error handler and write a dedicated error handler here but that's not what i want to do i want the calling code to handle the error and this is basically how you should use on error resume next like apply it to one single line of code and immediately afterwards uh, switch it off again the only exception to that is if you care about um, the exact nature of the error that might have happened. If you need to evaluate the error number, then you would need to uh, copy the error number first and then um, do the on error go to wherever because that will reset the, the error information. So you need to capture it before doing the on error go to statement. So and in this statement, we uh, in this procedure, we don't really care about um, what error happened because we just check is uh, was the instance of Outlook created or not. And if it was not created, then we use the create object method to create a new instance. And if an error happens there, it will bubble up to the calling procedure and that can do whatever is appropriate in that case. So far, so good. That is that is definitely um, working a, a reliable, solid implementation using on error resume next. Now let's look at another procedure. Um, this is the one I mentioned earlier. Collection contains key. Um, I just pass in a collection and a key, and. There is no uh, really easy way to check if uh, the key in a collection is already um, in there. So what I do here, I apply on error resume next, and then I just try to assign a dummy object uh, to, to the value that is retrieved from the collection by using the key. And if the key isn't there, then this will fail with an error. And I don't really care about the error itself. I just check if our object, the, the dummy object, is still nothing. And then it's failed and, and the method returns. And this is um, a method that, that that can't really be added much. We could do a set dummy equals nothing here at the end at the cleanup. And uh, that's just fine because by definition, collection contains key. There's not really anything I could in a sane mind add to this procedure. So there's basically not much risk that I add code there. So, 
Uh, let's just save this and call the um, method to the collection contains key method to check if it actually works. And I create some object that doesn't really matter. I use a new instance of DAO DB engine, but could be any object. That's not really uh, relevant here. So um, we added a banana to the collection and of course the banana key was found. And now we, we change that to ABC banana and run it and now no banana is found. So this works as expected. So, and this was how the code was intended to be used when I wrote it. But um, collection contains key should work whenever the collection contains a key. And now we do this. And you see, no banana found but we clearly added a banana to the collection. So what was happening here? I assumed that there is an object in the collection and used the, used the set uh, keyword to assign the um, to assign the, the dummy object. But in my testing procedure here, uh, I just added a string because I was so lazy and I didn't want to create the, the object. So let's run this again. And if we now check for the error, uh, no, 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 we don't want to clear it. We want the description. Uh, come on. So it says object required. So the problem here, sorry for switching the, to the other window. So the problem here is, uh, sorry, I'm the wrong location. The problem here is not that, um, the key is not present, but that there is no object in the collection. So it's a completely different error, but I don't notice it because on error resume next, and this is pr and this is still um, nothing, even though there was the key in the collection, because um, in the collection there was no object but a string. And so to, to really fix this, um, I, I changed it and let's stop it here uh, to var type found as long. And now we say we check for the var type of whatever is found in, oh, and we need to assign a value. var type found is minus one. We initialize the value, the, the var type found um, variable, and then we check for what type found is greater or equal zero. So in our dummy is not required here anymore. So we save this and now we check for the banana in the collection and now it works and it still works just to make sure it still works also when we add the object to the collection. Uh, no, yeah, sure, we, we haven't had the banana here. Now if we rename it back to banana, the banana is found. So, okay, um, that's already all I wanted to show with code samples. But the lesson to be learned here is, if you use on error resume next, and then check if your code was successful or not, 
be really careful and be really specific for what you check. Because if maybe your check fails because, and, and the on error resume next is still in effect, you might never notice and the result of the check is incorrect. So basically the, the best way is just to apply on error resume next, just to a single line or very, very few lines of code and then check if they produce the desired result. Or the other option is to apply it to a narrow scoped, very short, very, um, very distinct uh, procedure with a distinct purpose and just use it there. But be careful because you see I made a huge mistake there that uh, luckily nobody noticed until now. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye for now.